go and just like that we should be uh, we should be live I think um, we'll see if the stream catches up here there's a couple of little dropped frames I think we've got some Wi-Fi challenges along the way um, but uh, we're generally running pretty good here uh, I'm in my office at the moment uh, and uh, what I'm staring at right now is the uh, Eden page on expataudio.com and so uh, Wow, we're only getting like six frames per second at the moment, so that might be a little on the slow side. Um, but if anybody is watching, leave a comment on YouTube for me um, and uh, advise me to get some new hardware to be able to record with at this rate, I think. Anyway, 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 anyway. Um, so what I'm looking at doing is making a board to help me assemble these and to keep the you know the capacitors in the right place and so on um, pretty important stuff really so that everything is straight and everything is, is beautiful um, so what I've done here is uh, down here this is the old schematic for the Eden board um, that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty uh, well busy <laughs> if you will um, we use a very specific output capacitor uh, on these uh, it's a um, it's actually a bipolar capacitor made by Panasonic, um, so that uh, so that we can't get accused of using, you know, polar capacitors and all that kind of nonsense. Uh, but um, the thing of interest here really is this schematic, and this is a busy old B of a schematic. But but I don't actually need all these traces. What I actually want to put um, uh, pin headers around uh, are uh, the capacitors mainly, and optionally the uh, the pin headers themselves and so one of the first things I need to do here is switch off all of the uh, all of the uh, traces here I'm going to switch on uh, the pads and dimension and you'll see now I've got the outline of the board and the actual pin headers now I, I kind of know the ones I want to put you know uh, placement help on because they're actually 
sort of these larger ones here. Um, these ones tend to be more for kind of veers or for through holes that I use later on. But I also need to know like you know how large the capacitor, the holes for the capacitors are as well. So I'm going to turn on top silk where I've removed most of the silk screen on this specific one and I've left just um, just the circles where the caps are. Okay, so let's uh, apply that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this as a DXF so that the DXF itself can go into uh, can go into uh, uh, Fusion 360. So let's do that. Um, uh, export file as a DXF. Oh, now this is one of the gotchas. Let me convert this into millimeters first. And this is something I've done before, which was a major screw up. So uh, I'm glad I've kind of learned this. Uh, we're going to export to DXF. And we're going to browse Eden PCB. We'll say create a new folder here. We'll just call it um, 3D printed jig and save that. And what I've done now is that's actually gone and saved. Uh, in the, uh, let me make sure it's happened, why with fill areas, okay. Now when you export into um, Fusion, you really want to take as few traces and things as possible because Fusion slows down like a hog with too much stuff. And you'll see that now. Let's, um, let's start a new project in Fusion. So I'm going to start a new design. And create a new sketch. Voila. I'm going to insert a DXF and I'm going to choose recent places. It's going to be 3D printed jig. There we go. Beautiful. Now, actually, there's a bit of a challenge with this. And that challenge is that um, this is the wrong way around right now. I actually need to flip this. I wonder if I can flip it here. No, darn it. Okay, let's do an undo on this. And we will flip this round to the bottom. And there, there is logic in my madness, I promise you. Um, but let's uh, start. Come on. Where is my... Uh, There we go. I want to see the origins. Here we go. No, I'm not doing very well here tonight. This is why we do it in real time, huh? Um, we will do this. Flip it twice. So we're looking from the bottom. Insert DXF. And it's going to force me into, into, here we go, that plane. Select the DXF file. There's my DXF. And from there, we should have everything. Beautiful. Everything's in millimeters. Everything is fine. Great. Dandy. OK. Now, you, you'll notice here that uh, my wife is singing in the, in the kitchen as well. Some great singing! Um, let me see. And that's what happens when your wife is threatening to leave the house. Um, so the, one of the challenges here, actually, if, if, you, if you look up at 
uh, up here is that these are not circles right now so I'm wondering if I have to add the drill points or something to make that a little easier um, but what I'll do in the meantime I think is we can, I think we can work with this so if I look down at the board at this point and I'm holding uh, not holding I can actually look at the board itself you'll see we have two um, capacitors uh, at the bottom here and then uh, a few across the top here and uh, what we can do with that is two across the bottom, two across the top. Is uh, let me see, let me see how that's come across in Fusion. Fusion has actually put that the right way around, which I actually want to mirror this because when the board is flipped the other way around, the capacitors need to point down. So I'm going to have to highlight all of this and rotate it. And so let's do that by grabbing this. There we go. Have a zoom out. My PC is struggling a little because uh, I'm running Fusion and I'm streaming. So we'll grab all of this as one, and we're going to modify it by flipping it 180 degrees. So I wonder if I can do that here. Project, offset, modify, move, copy. Here we go. And all I'm doing right now is rotating it so put the origins in for just a minute and grab the space mouse all right I want to rotate it around this axis come back this axis here so it's gonna flip you ready wish me luck and we're gonna go 180 degrees okay so that's happened once. And that didn't really help too much. Uh, or did it? No, it didn't. I was the wrong way around. And that's the dog you can hear barking uh, outside. Um, let me see. Where's my undo? So it was originally like that. I actually want to flip it this way. So we're going to grab all of this. And we will move it. So we're gonna uh, with the move. And we'll switch on our origin so that we have things to flip around, and we'll move things a little as well. Okay, select. We're going to select this axis here, and that should. If I do 180. Come on. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to do one more move. And we're going to do. Is M for move? Yes. We're going to move a point to a point. So I'm going to grab this point here, origin point, and move it to here. You ready? Let's see if this works. Come on. Okay. Go on. Go on. Move for me. Go on. No, I'm not going to move? Or is it thinking about it? You never know, do you? Alright, so let's uh, let's keep on going then. Why didn't that move? That should have moved. Alright, so let's try one more time. Ready? We're going to move that point. Come on, maybe it thought the point was actually uh, one of its own. So we're going to move that point to the target, let's switch off this view for just a second. Switch off all sketches. All right, you ready? Wow, 
this is really poor performance for my PC. This is a brand new excuse to go buy a new PC. Uh, it's because it's handling 600 points at the moment. Okay, let's click cancel for now. Let's clean this up, I think. Let's make it easier for the computer to handle. Um, we don't need these points, so we can highlight these and get rid of them. Because these are vias at the moment or whatever, so I don't actually need to uh, put a pin header in those. Alright, I think that's about it. That should simplify things a lot. Uh, I can probably get rid of these edges as well. So let's get rid of those. What time is it? 6.30 get rid of these so this is me simplifying the number of points that the computer has to track in the th three dimensions and so on as silly as it sounds 1, 2, 3, there's my power lines I'll get rid of these circles as well. Oopsie daisy. Oh, I. Th oh wow. Okay, let's uh, let's undo those. So it looks to me like these aren't actually um, like circles in the same way that you know they'd be defined as a circle. I think they're curves in the software tool. Let's try this one more time. And the dog is barking. Good thing that no one's watching. Uh, <laughs> all right, so now we're down to far, far fewer uh, curves and lines and things. That's a curve, that's a, oh, that's a half curve. Okay, these are half circles. All right, so we've been going 20 minutes so far. We're getting there slowly but surely. Um, from here, let's... Um, start moving things into being guides right so these can be what we call construction lines we press X for those to make them construction lines and we'll make these into construction lines and make these into construction lines as well uh, I'm not actually going to drill holes in this we're actually just going to use um, uh, we're actually just going to use like a square bit of plastic I think Okay, so you can see the difference here in Fusion 360 between the blue lines and the orange lines. The orange lines, you can't do anything with other than reference them for something else, as in point them out and be, use them for something else. There we go. Um, the the, the um, blue lines, on the other hand, you can actually do something with. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just a minute. So we're going to make a box around it. There we go. We'll make it uh, about three millimeters in diameter. Go. Okay, and basically our P our PCB is now going to fit into this. And the other thing I'll do is um, we will drag these out so you can slide the box into it. There's one and two. Beautiful. Okay. Um, now let's look at these 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 lines as well. So what I actually want to find here is the middle line between all of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, find the halfway point, and it should help me find the halfway point. Come on. No, not really. Okay. Um, let's try line. There we go. You see that little triangle? That triangle means that's the middle of that line. So I'm going to grab this, drag it all the way across here to this middle line. And now I actually have a center line going through all of those pins, which is really useful. So the um, we'll make it into a construction line. Uh, pressing X. And uh, here's a trick I learned a long time ago. Um, we're going to make boxes around it, but these are special boxes or rectangles. They're going to be center-based rectangles. So I can actually drag it on here. There we go. And just maybe sort of, uh, I think it was 1.2 tall by, and the, the width is a little bit more optional. 
there's one and I'll do another one here well we'll, we'll separate that in a minute I, in fact I've got no choice now so let's um, let's draw another line between this point and this point we'll make that into a construction line so that's an X by there and then we'll grab another one of these rectangles center rectangle oh, look at that and uh, what length what height was this 1.2 oh yeah okay so 1.2 make it a little bit longer again there we go and we'll do one more in the same way over here one line between there and there we're going to click on it we're going to make it into a construct construction line make a rectangle center based again 1.2 and the reason we're doing 1.2 is because I don't want the plastic to actually touch the metal pins I want to touch the plastic as part of the pins and so uh, there we go we'll do it that way in fact this is probably a good time to uh, to bring up uh, let's have a, look at a data sheet for a pin header so uh, Pin header data sheet. There we go. And uh, headers. I think these are generic enough, I think. Okay, so this is what I wanted to to really look at. Is there anything here that actually says the height of the this black plastic bit? If it doesn't, I'm going to be really surprised. Come on. There we go. Okay, so it's about... These ones are one millimeter. Uh, the ones I have, I think I measured slightly higher than that, which is interesting. I think I measured two point something. So let's see if we can find some standard Molex ones. Let me measure them. I've got a, a little uh, measuring tool with me here. Okay, take away the PCB width. Yeah, about 2.5 is what I'm measuring here on the one I have. So let's, uh, let's have a quick look. We'll sort by price here and then look at the data sheet. Um, sort by price. Of course, they're ridiculously priced as soon as you buy them from from Mauser. But these are no oh. Samtech. No, wow, eight cents a piece. Even that's extreme. Okay, so let's try headers, pin strip. A full position and apply filter and the dog has come in just to say hello as well while we're at it okay so now we've got here we go standard worth 2.54 gold everything very standard very boring what number do we get here and if it says one millimeter I will scream there we go 2.54 all right Good, good, good. This is the dog coughing up a lung in the background there. Um, okay, so so the the width on it though, that's the other thing we need to be looking at here. The width is 2.54 as well this way. So essentially, the pin itself is 0.64 um, millimeters. Uh, so, yeah, 0.64 millimeters, and yet the the, the pin itself is a 2.54. So what I want actually is for the pins to touch here, and to touch here. All right. 
right so uh, with that in mind let's jump back into fusion we've got 1.2 so we've given ourselves like 0 0.3 0 0.4 space on both sides that's great um, we're gonna offset this offset basically means make another line one millimeter around one two and three Okay, then we'll just do one at a time then. Is one. Two. Three. Okay. Let's move in the diagram a little. All right, we've got a put some in by here and by here now. So again I'm going to zoom in and draw a line a line between the center point of here and the center point of here. We'll make it into a construction line because that's what we're like. We're nice people and we do things like that. And then we do our little rectangle again. Now the wonderful thing about rapid prototyping is that it allows us to make one of these and then get it wrong and fix it real quick. So let's do 1.2 again. Oh, wrong way, actually yes. 0.2 is what I wanted. And about there. Beautiful. And we'll offset it once again. No, it's not selecting at all. Let's try that one more time. You ready? Here we go, offset. No, uh, chain selection. There we go, offset all by one millimeter. So now we've got one millimeter wall uh, around that. And we'll move across. Uh, okay, two more to do here. So we'll grab our lines. One, two, three, four. We'll make them both into construction lines. Press X to make them into construction lines. And then we go get our fabulous rectangle tool center point. Again, it's 1.2, not 12, by about a little more than that. There we go. Same thing again, 1.2 by, eh, call it, yeah, I should be okay, I think. All right, so now we've got those two, and let's put the boxes in. And tag it all. There's one. There's two. We'll zoom out a little bit more. Okay. So now I've done, now I have a box of some kind and everything else. I think it's looking pretty good. So let's save it first. <laughs> uh, we'll just call that Eden Jig. And we'll have a sip of tea. Because you all are real chatty tonight. Uh, let's have a look. So we've got this much done. Now, interestingly, what, what, what we're gonna try and do here, uh, let me show you how this works. So here's, here's one I drew earlier. The PCB is gonna sit in a jig with the capacitors and everything else pointing down. And so I can solder uh, you know, the pins up here. That's why I want to do solder pins up here. And so to do so, um, I've got a, you know, for the tallest component I have, it can just sit on the base of the jig. But for everything else, I have to kind of, you know, put a, put a, put a, a wall or something in, you know, to hold it, 
in place, right? So, um, or in, in the case of this header, this is basically what we're going to end up doing is creating a wall that doesn't quite touch the pins, um, but is there to support, uh, there we go, so, 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 you know, on both sides like that. And this will also be, be filled in to make sure that the component is pressed against the PCB. Now the capacitor itself is 11.2 millimeters. So I'm going to create a, let's stop the sketch, switch off the origins, go to regular view. All right. Um, so the, uh, sorry, I was getting my brain together there. Um, the height of the box here can be, you know, whatever we want it to be, 11.2, uh, uh, we'll just call it 10 for now. So we're gonna fix all these numbers in just a moment. Ah, you little crafty little beggar, there we go. Now I assume this is the base. What we're also gonna do is lift this, lift that, lift that, and that, up a little, to hold the pins in place. And the big question is, how much do you raise everything up? All right, and so uh, let's have a look, yes, cancel that, and we'll undo the last one as well. So what I'm gonna do here is, we're going to create some parameters. So for instance, uh, user parameters. So I could have one called max height, these are the, the height for the capacitors, and this is 11.2. Okay, and then I might put um, pin header uh, is 2.5 or 2.54, but on a 3D printer that doesn't really matter, that, you know, 0.4 of a millimeter is not gonna make that much of a difference. Um, okay, and so let's, we can come back with more in just a minute, but really we're only making header spaces for the uh, the boxes for, for, for the, uh, what you call it? Oh, and I should do uh, one more. PCB height, and that's usually 1.6 millimeter. 1.6 millimeter. Okay. And then let's come back to the sketch here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some things to hold the PCB up. And they're just gonna be simple boxes around these pin headers. So the PCB is gonna lie on, so on pin headers on top of these screw holes. So the PCB is just gonna rest essentially on, uh, on, on these square bits of plastic. It does mean, however, that these square bits of plastic need to be um, you know, a, a height below the outer wall. All right, is that gonna agree with me finally? Click, go on, you little bugger. Oh, Keith, hey, how's it going? Sorry, I just saw that. I'm sorry it's so late, man. I had to wait for the wife to get out of the house and so on. But uh, thank you for tuning in, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, maybe more of my fans are British than Americans or something. Uh, why isn't that clicking today? Click, you little bugger. No? Okay, let's try it one more time. Line. I'm gonna go all the way to the edge here. There we go. All right, so we, now we've got that. Fantastic, okay. Stop the sketch. All right, so let's take the, uh, and the other thing I want to do is I want to make a new uh, sketch as well. And this time, it's going to be just a square one. So let's get rid of this one. Where was it? Oh, okay, I actually need to project into this new one. So we're gonna project. No, not the whole thing. I don't want to project the whole thing. I want to project just one, two, three, four. Now I know you're wondering to yourself, why on earth are you doing this? Well, what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna make a base. 
Okay. And so let's uh, rotate this. God, I wish this PC was faster. I'm going to set up a GoFundMe just for a new PC. Um, we're going to go down about two or three millimeters. There we go. That's fine. Hunky doke. And then we're going to switch this on. And we're going to go switch this on and put it up to, let's say, uh, 15 millimeters. Why not? I can always, I can always uh, knock this down later and it'll join it as well. So now we have a box of some kind. And now we need to just raise what we want up. There's a song there somewhere. Uh, all right, so we switch this on. Now, if I go back to my little Visio diagram I drew here, you'll see we've done this outer wall, we've done this base. Now we need to put these walls up at the maximum capacitor height, and then we'll work out what this height is as well in just a moment. So this one is actually the maximum component height, right? Which is right now is 11.2. So if I go uh, back into here and say, extrude this, extrude this, extrude this, and extrude this equals uh, max height. There we go, look at that. It's right there. Press enter. Come on, work for me. Why won't it go? Why is it being a little? Equals max height. Come on. All right, what's max height on our change parameters? Max height's 11.2. So why are we having a problem with this? Maybe it's a special keyword. So let's say cap max height, cap max height. It's been a while since I used this tool, I'll admit it. One, two, three, four. Cap max height. Ta da! All right, fantastic. So now I can actually set this to be uh, the, this original extrusion that we did. Which one was that? That was this one. We can actually make the formula cap max height. plus PCB height. Press enter. There we go. So now you'll notice, look at this, I'll, the, the, the difference between the top of this and the top of this is going to be 1.6. That makes me happy. Now let's go back to our Visio. So we've got this height done, we've got this done, we've got the caps in place, and the only other thing are pin headers now. Now I want the pin headers to be this distance below the maximum component height. And I've got those already, that's 2.5 if I remember rightly. So let's jump in here, grab the boxes we made. And is there another one? hiding, there's two more of the buggers. All right, so we, the formula will be cap max height, take away, uh, what was it called, pin head or something? Pin header, press enter. Now let's have a quick zoom around. That to me looks pretty darn good. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be a bit cheeky here and add some chamfers at the base. What chamfers are going to do is just give these a little strength, that's all. There we go. Come on. So they don't snap off. Because I expect these to be played with pretty roughly. And of course, worst case, if they do break, I'm just going to reprint it anyway. No, I didn't want that one. Ah, oh, you Egypt. Uh, there we go. So all 
these lower edges we're going to fatten them up a little bit essentially come on we can move and rotate around here as well to catch the better angles come on chop chop there we go one two three four I think that's all of them right that's that should be and we're gonna put one millimeter on them if we put one millimeter how do they go does it complain at me oh yes it does complain at me okay let's try 0 0.5 then Oh, that kind of worked a little bit. Let's try 0 0.75 then. 0 0.75 looks kind of good, doesn't it? All right. Fantastic. And then the other thing I'm going to do here, I wonder if I can, no, that's not going to help. The other thing I want to do here is I'm going to do a little chamfer around the edges of these holes as well. And the reason being, uh, let's do another one, is we want the, the pins to kind of slide in, if you will, pardon the uh, double entendre there. There's one, two, three, Now it's possible that will make this exterior wall very weak. Um, so you know, after I print this, I may find that I actually want to. Uh, I may want to. There we go. I may want to make these walls thicker. One millimeter is a very thin wall for a, a basic three D printer. And that's the dog barking. At some poor soul. What time is it? Oh, okay, we still got 30 minutes before I gotta go. All right, and we're gonna put uh, 0 0.5. Let's see if it realizes we're going in. Yeah, okay, let's do 0 0.4 then. Here we go. And even that much of a, even that much is actually gonna help, you know, pins kind of slide into place and so on. That's the idea. Um, but yeah, okay, so I think that's us, more or less. Right? Um, I'd like to make these a little more if I can. How much can I push it up to, do you think? 0 0.8, maybe? No complaints? No? Okay, we'll go up a little higher then. The higher I can make this, the stronger these these, these connection points are actually going to be. That's the, that's the main thing. Uh, 0 0.9. Oh, it's letting me do it. No freaking way. One? Will it let me do one now? Oh, no, it doesn't like that. Sharanfer could not be created the requested size. Ah, you beggar. Okay, so let's just do 0 0.9 then. I'll run with it. All right. So I'm going to assemble the board. I'm going to put the pins in, slide this on top, and then flip it over. That's the idea. So uh, this should this should work. And regarding the capacitors, I don't necessarily need something to hold the capacitors in place. Right? I just need something to put enough force them to push them back up. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I think. Let's save it before I lose it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder. I wonder what would happen if I did this. Would this make it stronger? No, I don't want to cut. I want to join. Come on, join. Because I've got nothing else very high on the PCB. Right, so if I look at my image of the PCB. Uh, where is it? Here. Everything else on that board is surface mount. 
So I've got a long way, so I could probably make a hole for these and fill it with plastic a little bit. So let's uh, go back to this, undo this. We'll undo that chamfer. I know, I know, I know. I shouldn't have wasted Jules' time. Um, we'll go back to the original here. Now watch this, you ready? We're gonna offset these and we'll just go out like 0.5 minus 0 0.5 oh yeah and what that's going to do for us is just give us a little bit of wiggle room minus 0 0.5 you'll see what I'm about to do now and then you'll be like whoa Rochi that is so smart nobody ever says that to me normally Ah, yeah, Keith, I've done that before as well, um, the, the, uh, uh, to do the opposite one. The problem is the pin headers you put in the other side then get melted. Um, that was one of the reasons why I, I wanted to make these, is, is that uh, uh, the boxes you put around don't get melted, whereas uh, if, you, yeah, if you do it the other way, they tend to, they tend to cook a little. All right, so let me see. Okay, and then we'll make, take these center ones. We're going to make these into a construction one. Ugh, fair play. I have moments of brilliance at times. All right, let's have a quick look. All right, so now what we're going to do is extrude the rest of it up without, you know, and, and subtract in the extrusion um the holes for the caps and I better make sure I'm leaving enough room for uh leaving enough room for for the uh, surface mount devices and they're all like yeah less than two two millimeters or something like that maybe I could come up a little bit more So what's this height? Inspection. So remember that this is this height here is actually the distance over on top of the PCB. And right now that is 4.2 millimeters. Let's uh, have a look at that on the, uh, on the old ruler. Oh, that's acres of room. That's acres of room. Okay. Um, all right, and we'll we're gonna chamfer. We'll do this nicely. Come on, chamfer, 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 just to help these caps fit in better. Oh, David's gosh, you know, when I start kicking butt, it's fantastic. Uh, let's try two to begin with. Um, I wonder if that would work. Might help me install things better, right? I don't need to be that much. Let's do 1.5. Maybe even one. That's nice, right? That's nice. That's gonna, um, yeah, slide in nicely there. Okay. Okie dokie karaoke. Let's have a quick look. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to save it because otherwise I'll lose it knowing me. And we'll hopefully only have one body. Yeah, it's, this is all one solid body. So we're going to right click on this, save as STL. Yeah, this is grand. Uh, 3D printing jig. Um, jig V1. And we've all done this, haven't we? V1, V2, V3, V4, and then you suddenly hit 10, and it's like, oh, what am I gonna do now? I haven't left myself enough room. So let's do zero P1. And I'm gonna fire up my software that I have here. Where is it? Simplify 3D. It's having a good think while that loads. 
Okay, we'll remove the old thing I was working on, import the new one, bigger, faster, better, stronger. And it's, uh, yes, I've been playing Quake recently. Uh, recent places, 3D printed jig, here's the jig. Kadunk! All right. This PC is slow as molasses, and I've got no idea why. But uh, we'll use my standard printing settings, and it's it's the fastest one, really. You don't need like ultra precision on a lot of this stuff. Let's see how long it comes up with. So tired, tired of waiting. Tired of waiting for you. One hour and three minutes. All right, let's just pop in my downloads folder. All right, well, I'm going to stop the stream there, I think, and get this thing up and printing, and I'll post a picture at the end. Uh, Keith, it was lovely seeing you again. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you stopping by. I know it's late for you. And uh, for everybody else, it's your last bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, wish me luck in getting this uh, all printed, and uh, hopefully I'll... Stream again soon. Thanks again.